Welcome back to Our Family Bee, I'm Brigitte, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use your Instant Pot. I have the Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus. I'm gonna show you everything from taking it out of the box, what comes with it, how to use it when you first set it up. Are you ready? Excited? Let's get into it. got my first Instant Pot about a month ago, so I've been learning all about it and I wanna share what I've learned with you. I know it can be a little confusing and scary, but I'm gonna walk you through everything that comes in this box. Like I said, I have the Duo Evo Plus, but if you have another model or version, there are a lot of similarities, so I think you'll still get value out of this video. With the Instant Pot, the Duo Evo Plus, which is what I got, there are a lot of new features that I have noticed are different from older features, so I am actually really glad that I have this model and I'll show you some of the similarities and differences, but Let's talk about what comes in your box. In your Instant Pot box, you will have a couple of items. You're gonna have a couple of manuals and a quick start guide. These are very useful, I did read through them. Instant Pot has a recipe index online, which you can look for, but there's also tons of stuff on Pinterest and on Google and stuff that you can look up. You will have a trivet, which is very handy if you want to cook stuff underneath or just put water underneath and your food on top. You will have a ceiling ring. This is an extra ceiling ring because on your lid, it will come with one already. Now, let me tell you a little trick because you will have two, at least in the model that I got. So I recommend using one for savory and one for sweet dishes because you don't want those mixing because that's just gonna be gross. Even after you clean these, they will start to retain a smell. It's silicone, it just happens, no matter how well you clean it. But if you keep them separate, you will keep the sweet and the savory and it will be fine. You can also get extras, which you can order on Amazon. We won't judge you. And with the ceiling ring, you want to make sure that when you put it back on after cleaning it, it goes around completely and seals all the way around or else your Instant Pot will not reach pressure next time you go to use it. You are going to have a base that comes like this. Let's take off the lid, which we'll talk about later. But your base has your control panel and it has two handles here. Inside your base comes with the inner pot. You want to make sure when you are cooking, you put all of your ingredients in this inner pot, not inside of this. Inside of the base, there is a heating element here around, and when you put the pot in, it will push it down, and that is how your food is going to cook and come to pressure and heat. So on the base of the Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus, there are a few buttons. You have pressure cook, rice grain, steam, saute, slow cook, sous vide, yogurt, and bake. The one you are going to most use is going to be the pressure cook. This is basically like the time cook button on your microwave, so you can set anything to manual. You don't have to use the presets, although once you learn them, the presets can make it a lot easier. Down around the center knob, you have a delay start, you have a keep warm, you have a cancel, and a start button. The ones you will most use are the start and cancel button. On the base when you're cooking, this LED screen will light up and it will tell you where you're at on your control panel. So you can turn the knob to find which setting you want and you can customize the time and actually if you want to do high or low pressure. Most recipes call for high pressure so that's the setting you will most often use. On the model I have, this inner pot actually comes with two handles on the side. It makes it super easy to lift it out and put it back in and this one doubles as a stock pot so you can put this right onto your stove if you want to use it like that. It's very heavy duty. I really like it. Seems like it's going to hold up for a while. And on the inside, you're going to see there's a couple of line measurements where you can see how many quarts are in it. And it has a max fill line and a half fill line. So that's very useful because you do not want to overfill your Instant Pot or else it will not be able to come up to pressure and it will not cook your food properly. So once you put the inner pot into the Instant Pot base, what you will need to do is get your lid. Okay, here is the lid, and let me show you the parts of the lid. So the outside part, this one has a cooling tray which you can get an accessory for, which I do not have, but that's for I feel like more advanced users. So let's just talk about these back controls here. This one, if you take off this cover here, you can actually see this looks very similar to the older models, except for it doesn't have a little, what's it called, like a 
It doesn't have a little notch that sticks out, but it's just this free floating circle thing. This is what you will turn on your older models, but this, when you put the cover on, will dissipate the steam. Next to it, you will see the pressurized button. On this one, it is red, and when it is depressurized, it will be down like it is right now, and when the inner pot comes to pressure and you have the lid on, it will pop up, and that is when you do not want to open the lid because it could be dangerous. Now, on this lid, on the newer model, I really like that it has a vent and seal button right here. So you don't turn this part here. You actually only have to click this button right here. So your hand is far away from anything that will have steam come out of it when you have to vent the Instant Pot. That is one of the things I was most worried about with an Instant Pot was that I was gonna blow my hand off or something. But with this, you will not because the button is way over here and you do not have to come in contact at all with where the steam comes out. One thing that I absolutely love on this lid is that when you put the lid onto the base and you turn it to lock it in, the vent and seal button will go from vent to seal automatically so you don't have to remember to manually turn it. And that's one feature that I'm really glad this model has because I would definitely forget. In fact, I've already done it. So if you get the Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus, that is a little perk because you never have to remember to manually turn the vent to seal. The first thing you will want to do after you take everything out of the box and take everything apart is put the ceiling ring into the lid, plug in your base and open the lid. And then you're going to run your initial water test. This is just gonna make sure that everything in your Instant Pot is functioning properly before you actually put food into it. You will need three cups of water, so two and one, and you're gonna pour it right into the inner pot, not the base, but the inner pot. After you do that, you will put the lid back on and lock it into place. Next, you will hit the pressure cook button. On my Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus, it flashes custom. I'm going to hit the center button to select that, and I'm going to put the time to five minutes by turning the knob. Next, simply press start. You'll now be able to see on the LED panel where you are at in the cooking process. So right now it is preheating and you can see on the track bars how far in the process it is. Once it starts cooking, it will move to the middle section and then when it is done, it will switch over to a keep warm section and you can see the process and it will actually start counting up. So while it is cooking, the time will count down from the time you set it. Once it switches to keep warm, it will start counting up so you know how long it's been naturally releasing. When your timer goes off on the Instant Pot, all you need to do is switch it over to vent and do a quick release. And let me just tell you real quick the difference between natural release and quick release. All it means, because I just learned this, natural release just means that you let it sit and when it switches over to the keep warm setting, you leave it for an extended period of time, be it 10, 15, 20 minutes. But a quick release means that as soon as it's finished, you switch it from seal to vent right away. Depending on what you're cooking, depends on which release will be better. If it's larger cuts of meat or something really watery or starchy like soups, then you wanna do a natural release for 10, 15, 20 minutes. If it's something that cooks faster like vegetables or fish, then you can do it quick release and it will stop the cooking process right away and it's better for those types of recipes. After your initial water test is done, you can take out the inner pot, dump your water, and you are ready to make your first meal in the Instant Pot or one ingredient meal because that's what I started with. So if you wanna check out my very first day having the Instant Pot and my experience with it, I'm gonna link it down below. It was called Instant Pot, Is It Worth It? But stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed because this is going to be the start of a series of how to Instant Pot. As I learn tips and tricks and things to do and not do and recipes, I'm gonna be sharing it all with you guys. So make sure you're subscribed and make sure your notification bell is clicked up to all so you don't miss when we post those videos. If you liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up because it lets us know that you want more content like this. If you're new here, jump in the comments down below and say hi. To check out more videos we've done, make sure you click below. Until we meet again, don't forget, life is better together.